Kyoto Year 12 and 13. Here are some excerpts from the Level 3 differentiation paper from 2015. I've chosen questions that look at how to find the gradient of a tangent and a normal and properties of functions. So most of these questions are at achieved or merit level. I'll note which one they are as we go through. Okay, the first question requires us to find the gradient of the tangent to this function here. And we're asked to find the gradient of the tangent at the point 1, 1. So step 1 is to differentiate, and we're going to use the chain rule to do that. So dy by dx is equal to 3 times 4x minus 3x squared squared times the derivative of the inside function, which is 4 minus 6x. Now I could clean that up if I were doing something elegant with it, but because all I'm asked to do is to find the gradient at the point 1, 1, I now just need to substitute in x equals 1. So we can write it like that. So it's 3 times 4 minus 3 squared times 4 minus 6, which equals 3 times 1 squared, which is 1, times negative 2, which gives us negative 6. Okay, and that is an achieved question. Okay, in this question we have to find the values for which a function is increasing. And we've got to use calculus and show derivatives to do it. So I'm going to start by rewriting the function out like this, so that I can easily differentiate it. For increasing, for an increasing function, we must have the gradient is strictly positive. So we start by finding the gradient function, which is 8 plus 2 times negative 1, x plus 1 to the negative 2, and the gradient of the inner function, applying the chain rule, is just 1. So we get the um, derivative function is 8 minus 2 over x plus 1, all squared. And we want to have that being strictly greater than 0. I'm going to do the working for this on the next slide. Okay, so 8 minus 2 over x plus 1 squared is greater than 0. 8 greater than 2 on x plus 1 squared. Right, cross multiplying. I get this. Now it's okay to do that because the denominator is always positive. Now I'm going to divide both sides through by 8. So I get this. x plus 1 squared is greater than 1 quarter. Now we could go through and expand that out and solve it how we used to solve quadratics in year 12. But more intuitively, let's do a wee number line. Here's 0. This thing here, we could call this z, z squared is greater than 1 quarter. So when will that be true? Well, it'll be true when z is greater than a half, but also when z is less than negative a half. So we don't need to do the, the z thing properly, we can just take it from there, and we're going to get two conditions. We're going to have x plus 1 greater than 1 half, or x plus 1 is less than negative a half. And that will give us two solutions. The first one, the easy one, comes from subtracting 1 from both sides of this inequation. x is greater than negative a half. The second comes from the second inequation, which is x is less than negative 3 over 2. Right, if you're not comfortable with that, I suggest that you check a few values in the solution set. For example, check that when x is 1, that the statement's true, but also check some negative numbers, and 0 is always a good one to check as well. Okay, but if you got all the way down to there, that is a merit tick on last year's paper. Right, next question coming up. 
Right, for what values of x is the tangent to the graph of this function parallel to the x-axis? Okay, parallel to x-axis means gradient is equal to 0. So we're going to start by rewriting the function. Oh, actually, we don't really have to rewrite it. Well, I'm going to rewrite the denominator just because it's going to help me when I use the product rule, I mean the quotient rule. Right, so f dash of x is equal to, well, square the denominator. Right, now I'm back to using the original form of the denominator. Let's square the denominator, copy it up to the top, and now differentiate the top line, the numerator. So we get that, minus the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator. Right, this is why I wanted to expand the denominator so that I can quickly get its derivative so it looks like that. Okay, so it's a little bit messy. We'll insert a new slide to do that working now. Okay, so f dash of x is equal to, I'll just write denominator for the bottom line, x squared minus 5x minus, expanding out the quadratic, 2x squared plus 8x minus 5x minus 20. Right. Now I'm doing this in lots of steps because this is where it's quite easy to make an algebraic error. Now I've got a plus 3x here multiplied by negative, so it's going to be minus 3x plus 20 over the denominator. That looks out to be negative x squared minus 8x plus 20 over, and now I will write that last line nicely. Right, so we're looking for, it's parallel to the x-axis when the gradient is 0, so we're trying to solve this equation, x squared plus 8x minus 20 equals 0, right, so I have taken numerator and I've multiplied it through by a negative 1. I can do that because I've got 0 on the side so it doesn't change anything. So factorising that I get x minus 2 times x plus 10 equals 0, x equals 2 or x equals negative 10. Okay and that's another merit question. Next slide. Okay, this one's an achieved question. We've got y equals x minus 16x to the negative 1. We're asked to find the gradient of the normal at the point where x is 4. So remember that um, derivative gives me the equation, gives me the gradient of the tangent at a point, and the normal line is just perpendicular to the tangent. So step 1 is to find the gradient of the tangent y by dx is equal to 1 plus 16x to the negative 2, which is 1 plus 16 over x squared, which at x equals 4 is equal to 1 plus 16 over 4 squared, which is 2. This is gradient of the tangent. So gradient of normal equals negative 1 over 2. Right, it is perpendicular to the tangent. Okay, so negative 1 half, and that was a nice, easy, achieved question. Okay, I'm pretty sure we did this one in class already, but if not, we'll have another look. Um, this is looking at the work we did on limits and differentiability. To get merit on this, you had to get four out of five of the next questions right. So it was um, either a merit or a very easy achieved if you got two of them. So find the values of x that meet the following conditions. Where is the function not defined? Well, if you have a look, there's only one place that it's not defined, and that's at x equals 1. It is defined at 2, it just has a jump, and it is also defined at negative 1. So where is it not differentiable? Right, well, there's a problem 
here because the limit of the tangent is not equaling the value of the function, so it's not differentiable at x equals negative 1, it's not differentiable at the asymptote, and it's also not differentiable where we've got a jump. So three values there. Where is the second derivative positive? So we're looking for places where it is concave up. In other words, where is the gradient increasing? And you can do this by taking your pen and having a look. Now I wonder if I can do that. I think I can. Nope. There we are, lightsaber. Okay, that's the first time I've used the lightsaber in this Year 13 videos. My Year 10s quite like it. So you can see the lightsaber actually unfortunately doesn't change slope as I move. That would be even cooler. But we're looking for, we have to go back to the pen. Where is the gradient increasing? Well, it's not here. But once I've got to here, you can see those tangent lines are getting steeper. So it's concave up in this part of the curve. What a mess. So it's concave up for the bit between negative 1 and 1, not at those ends. I'm just going to get rid of some of that mess. Okay, so concave up there. Okay, two more questions here. What's the value of the function at negative 1? Well, it's where there's the black blob. It is 3. State clearly if the value doesn't exist. No, it does exist. What is the value of the limit as x tends to 2 of the function? Right, well this is where we've got an undefined value because coming from above, the function's heading towards 3. Right, coming from below, the function's heading towards 2. So, is not defined. In other words, it doesn't exist. Right, so remember the test is the Sistine Chapel and Michelangelo and the fingers meeting. Right, the fingers don't meet, so the limit is undefined. Right, again, if you got four out of those last five right, that is a very, very easy merit tick. Okay, next one, back to an achieved question. We're looking for what value of x does the tangent have a gradient of 4? So we'll find the derivative function. Switch to green. Right, so 5, chain ruling, 5 over 2x minus 3, times the derivative of the inside function, which is 2. So we've got 10 over 2x minus 3. Okay, and the next thing we need to do here is to figure out when is the gradient 4. Be careful here, it's not x equals 4, right? Don't do that. What it is, is saying where is the gradient 4. So we're solving for f dashed of x equals 4, cross multiplying we get 8x minus 12 equals 10, 8x equals 22, as usual I'm running out of space, and we get x is equal to 11 over 4, which is 2 and 3 quarters, or for you guys who all like decimals it's 2.75, which is fine. Right, and on to the last one. Right, so we're looking for where is the derivative function equal to 0? Now, I'm first going to rewrite this into a product because I prefer to use the product rule. So f dash of x is the first times the derivative of the second, so chain ruling that function, plus the second times the derivative of the first function. So f dash of x is equal to e to the negative 3x times 1 minus 3x equals 0 when x equals 1 third, right? Since e to the negative 3x is not equal to 0, ever, for any real x. Okay, and that also was an achieved question. Thanks for watching. Um, make sure that you have reviewed the relevant sections in Delta and New Lake and done lots of practice at these because as you can see, the normal and the tangent stuff comes up lots and lots in the exam papers.